Hello YouTubers, uh, this is a super quick video where we get to uh, explore one of the most interesting features that are coming in with the release of ASP.NET 6. In this video I'm going to show you how you can spin up an API endpoint in about a minute, maybe less. Let's just go ahead and let me show you how that works and then we'll talk after that about how you can use that in your day-to-day -day work, you know, developing software, experimenting with things and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start a new instance of Visual Studio in here, 2022 is Visual Studio. And I'm going to start up with a simple console application because they come in come in really simple without all the bills and whistles that come with any other project. I'm going to call this tiny, tiny API like this. Here we go. So tiny, tiny API creating a new project. And let's flip that project real quick into a, a web project, right? So this is, we want we want to pull in the, the foundation, you know, uh, work for a web project. So I'm just going to go ahead, right click on this guy, on the project itself. And then I'm going to go to edit the project file. And instead of having it Microsoft.net.sdk, that's the foundation layer, I'm just going to add in web in there. As soon as I click Control S and save, Visual Studio 2022 is going to detect that something has happened with your project and we probably need to take advantage of flipping that off, like reload the project so it can change the project structure and its schema to something that is ready for the web. That's all I did, just a simple console application, flip that off to web. What do I do next? You know, of course with your console application it comes in with a little bit of bells and whistles, just a simple hello world app. I'm going to delete all of that stuff. Right, and I'm gonna show you how you can, you know, as simple as that, probably five or six lines of code, you can actually start your own API real quick. So here's using system like this, and I'm gonna use something called Microsoft ASP.NET Core Builder, and I'm gonna tell you what that is in a second. Okay, what am I trying to build? I'm trying to create a web application, right? So in order for me to get a web application, I need a web application builder, right? So let's go ahead and start this web application builder first. This web application builder. I like to spill things out, you know, so I hope you're okay with that. And then we have web application, right? Create builder. Create builder like this. Okay, I got my builder. Maybe I want to pass in some arguments, whatever you want to do with it. Okay, so this is one piece. The second piece is I actually want the real actual web application, right? So this is my web app application. And this is my web application builder dot build. That's all I'm doing. Just building the web application just like that. Okay, let me zoom in here a little bit just so people can see the code. Okay, so a web application builder and a web application. Now let's go ahead and build the actual endpoint. So I'm just going to go ahead and say map get like this. And in this pattern in here, I'm going to say, well, I want to hit API slash home right and what this is going to map to I want it to return a string that says sorry Mario sorry Mario the princess is in another castle right so that's my message here and a simple web app that basically you hit an API endpoint and it basically brings back this guy this guy is complaining because map git expects um, a, a some sort of a delegate, you know, and it needs to be mapped to something. This is very an anonymous function that I built in here. So I'm just going to wrap this up in something called func and it returns a string like this. And I just want to wrap the function that I have in here just like this. Okay. So a simple web application builder. I have the build, I have the application, I'm mapping the request that's coming in. The last thing I have to do is to just go ahead and say run, run app. That's it. You just built an API endpoint. Is that really true? Is that really what's happening? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm going to run the application right now. Here's my application. And of course, this endpoint here is not going to hit anything because that's not what I mapped it to. But if I say slash API slash home, lo and behold, hello Mario, or sorry Mario, the princess is in another castle. Okay, so what does that really mean? It means that you can today, especially for people who want to spin up something real quick, you know, just so they can experiment with their, you know, maybe a Blazor application or a Xamarin application or whatever application they want to experiment with. Now they can just go ahead and experiment with their application 
you know, at the least amount of time possible, literally like about a minute, you know, two minutes max, you have an API endpoint up and running just like that. But more importantly, you know, okay, it's great for experimentation, but what can it also help with, right? What can it also help with? Let me show you what, what it can also help with. You can actually set this technology you know, to kind of create phantom API. So let's say you have your existing, you have your existing API endpoint in here. So let's say this is my API. I have a school API. Let's call this is my school API, right? And this is a true, full-blown end-to-end API ASP.NET application, right? That's running. And unfortunately, maybe this guy has an external dependency that you don't have control over. So you don't have a control over this particular external dependency, right? Usually, what what um, um, uh, what software engineer engineers do is that they go and they try something like Pact or Wiremock, and we talked about Wiremock before. You know, uh, Steph, one of the amazing people that worked on this project. You know, they, he basically you know started the foundation of the project, and I had the opportunity to actually talk to him and 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 um, and meet with him. Uh, virtually and he's one of the nicest people ever you know you see wiremark you see packed.net you see all of these options out there this is also another option you can actually create a phantom API in the in at the smallest amount of effort possible and you can basically record logs of what calls have been received by this particular uh, API endpoint. So you can basically go and say, for my lower environments, non-production environments, I want to test my entire stack end-to-end -end without touching our dependencies. I want to run in airplane mode. I want to run my entire API, my entire stack of microservices, without having to talk to the outside world, without having to talk to the cloud, without having to talk to any external dependencies. Airplane mode, right? How do I do that? You can actually log all the requests that are coming in into this system here and be able to, to, to trace that so you can make sure that you have the right, you know, communication going on between your internal microservices and your external uh, dependencies, you know, with with things as simple as 13 lines of code. And this 13 lines, 13 lines of code with me being really, really kind of, you know, uh, nitpicky about, you know, the, the length of the line and all that. If I were to do it this way, if I were to really, really want to know how many lines this would go, as long as they're less than 120 characters, you know, it would go, it would come down to less than 10 lines of code. 10 lines of code, you're up and running with a fully fledged end-to-end -end web application, sorry, web API, you know, that you can deploy today in Azure and actually have it up and running just as simple as that. I hope you found this useful. This is one of my quickest videos ever. Uh, I hope you find this useful. I, f I hope you find this um, uh, beneficial. And uh, maybe there are other things you can use this for. Um, if you come up with any other ideas and you find out any more usages of this, please feel free to drop it in the comment section so other people could learn from it. Um, if you found this content useful and if you want to learn more about it, please, you know, um, uh, drop a like, uh, hit the like button on this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm happy to answer all your questions about this, uh, this little amazing uh, piece of technology. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.